Hello everybody, my name is Shortline614 and welcome to episode 2 of Shortline's Rail News and Comment. And today, we are going to be talking about a very interesting prospect, and that is the prospect of BNSF de Mexico. Now, how do we know that BNSF is interested in expanding into Mexico? Well, a few days ago, the three Class 1 rares, including BNSF, submitted to the Surface Transportation Board what they would like out of the Canadian Pacific Kansas City merger. And let us go to this document that BNSF submitted that is linked in the description and is available on the Surface Transportation Board website, basically outlining what BNSF wants exactly. And what we really care about is this down here, which is uh, overhead trackage rights on a line owned by the Kansas City Southern Railway Company between Robstown and Laredo, Texas. And there is an asterisk. There is a, a little footnote here which says, The imposition of BNSF's overhead trackage rights between Robstown and Laredo, Texas, would take effect only if and when BNSF obtains the right to directly serve shippers in Mexico through a concession with the Mexican government. Now, let, let's take a look about how the Mexican rail network actually works. So I have this map of BNSF and Mexico, and let, let's take a look at Mexico itself for a little bit. So this is the Mexican rail network. There are a few major railroads. There is Ferromex, there is Ferrosur, which is also owned by Ferromex. There's Kansas City Southern. There's a number of smaller regional and short line railroads. But Mexico is interesting because the, it may not look like it on the surface, but the government of Mexico actually owns all of the rail infrastructure in Mexico. They own the, uh, the infrastructure. They own the rail lines and what they do is they uh, grant concessions out to various operators who operate these lines. For example, the uh, I think it's called the Northeastern Railroad is the concession that has been granted to Kansas City Southern since 1997. The uh, the uh, the Northwestern Railroad is the concession granted to Ferromex. Uh, they also have the uh, Chihuahua Pacific Railroad concession, which connects uh, the Mexican border to the Pacific Coast in. Uh, Sinaloa, I think. And, you know, various railroads have various concessions in Mexico. Now, these concessions were granted as part of privatization in 1997, and I may note out that ever since the Mexican rail network has been privatized, it has been growing by leaps and bounds, uh, thanks to a lot of outside investment and inside investment from Mexico, from companies like Kansas City Southern, Grupo Mexico, you know, people like that. And you know, Mexico is a big manufacturing hub, uh, especially uh, since NAFTA and the USMCA. And over the past few years, ever since COVID, a lot of companies have been trying to nearshore, bring manufacturing back from Asia to the United States, to Mexico, to Canada, and simply because of stretched supply chains. A lot of the supply chain shortages come from the fact that a significant portion of the manufacturing is located in Asia. So back to the concessions. So many of these concessions were granted in 1997, and, and they've, they've changed a bit over the years. Uh, for example, Kansas City Southern was originally called uh, TFM, and then they, Kansas City Southern bought out their partner in TFM, and it became Kansas City Southern to Mexico. Uh, Ferrosur, which is this concession down here, was originally an independent rare before being bought by Ferromex. Um, and these concessions, uh, they are 50-year concessions. So the concessions for all of these railroads formally expire in 2047, which is uh, two decades from now. Now, the concessions are exclusive until 2027. And what does that mean? Well, exclusive means that the concession cannot be changed. So come 2027, the Mexican government could say, Hey, Kansas City Southern, we're gonna we're gonna remove your concession. We want somewhere else. Or hey, hey Ferromex, we want to modify your concession so you have instead of uh, take away this line, add this line, give this rare trackage rights or whatnot. So basically, come 2027, there should be not a significant change in the Mexican rail network, but there should be a lot of change in the Mexican rail network in terms of who operates what and whatnot. So BNSF by um, by. Uh, through this filing has basically hinted at the fact that come 2027 they want a concession from the Mexican government to operate in Mexico which would mean the creation of a well a brand new class 1 rared in Mexico BNSF de Mexico um, so 
Let, let's take a look about why BNSF would want to do this. So this is, this is BNSF. It is the largest railroad in the United States. Despite that, uh, if you look at this map, BNSF does not serve a whole lot of Mexican uh, border crossings. You know, they serve out in San Diego, but that only goes down to Tijuana, and it's not really, it's basically a short line railroad. They serve El Paso, Texas, and a connection with Faramex. They serve Eagle Pass, and another connection with Faramex, and they serve Brownsville, which is a connection to Kansas City, Southern New Mexico. And as it currently stands, traffic coming from Kansas City, Southern New Mexico mainly flows via Laredo, Texas, which is this uh, city right here, and is actually the single busiest rail border crossing in North America, and Kansas City Southern takes that traffic along the former Texas-Mexican from Laredo to Robstown, Texas, which is BNSF wants trackage rights if they get a concession in Mexico. Now let's look at Union, uh, BNSF's competitors. Let's look at Union Pacific. Union Pacific, well, let's see what they serve. They serve Brownsville, they serve Laredo, they serve Eagle Pass, they serve El Paso, they serve uh, Nogales, they serve Mexicali. So they basically serve, with the exception of uh, San Diego, which as I said, doesn't really count. There's no, as you can see, the, the line, the border crossing at San Diego just kind of dead ends. With the exception, with the exception of uh, Presido, Texas, which is, um, it's unified under Faramex because Faramex is U.S. subsidiary, the Texas Pacifico. Union Pacific serves every single border crossing with the exception of those two, which in the grand scheme of things aren't really important. I don't even think there's a, there's a bridge at, at uh, Presido. They're in the process of rebuilding it. Uh, but it's not an active border crossing. Now, let, let, let's look at B, uh, Union Pacific again, and do they have any investments in the Mexican Rail Network? Well, yes, they do, 27%. Sorry about that. So where was I? Oh. Uh, well, Union Pacific owns 27% of the of Ferromex, which um, is the largest railroad in Mexico by far. And you also have to remember that coming off of Kansas City, Southern New Mexico, 50% of the traffic coming off of Kansas City, Southern New Mexico doesn't go on KCS. It goes to Union Pacific. So in the grand scheme of things, in terms of cross-border rail traffic, Union Pacific is, I would almost say, a near monopoly. Sure, Kansas City, Southern, they, they have a good 20, 25% of the traffic coming, flowing across the border, but by far, Union Pacific is the dominant carry. As I said, up to 70% of rail traffic flowing from Mexico to, to the United States and vice versa ends up on Union Pacific. And BNSF cross-border traffic is tiny, only, only around 5% of traffic that exists. So, it's natural to understand why BNSF would want to expand into Mexico to gain more border crossings, to get a piece of the Mexican rail network themselves so that they can better compete against Union Pacific. Now, what would this potential concession look like? Well, it is entirely possible that BNSF would, come 2027, would simply argue that Kansas City, Southern New Mexico, or, or by that point, Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, New Mexico, isn't doing a great job, and they, they'll seek to yank away uh, CPKC's uh, concession in Mexico. I do not think that is likely, however. Um, mostly because the Mexican government has become increasingly concerned about rail competition in the past few years, and I think it is far more likely that instead of simply changing one of the operators, they will allow BNSF to operate alongside Ferromex, alongside Ferrosur, operate alongside Kansas City, Southern New Mexico, and that would probably involve trackage rights from several other border crossings, so some from Brownsville to Monterey, from Laredo to Monterey, possibly over Eagle Pass to Monterey, maybe something in west uh, in uh, western Mexico, uh, in El Paso, up in, in Chihuahua. Uh, that would also probably include trackage rights down KCSM to, through San Luis Pelosti, into Mexico City, and that would also include a interest in the Mexico City Terminal Railway which is jointly owned between all the major railroads in Mexico. So that is what a potential concession would look like. Now, what I find real interesting is that this is possibly, th this isn't even, this is possibly the backup plan, because if you remember, if you remember back a few months, and if you've been paying attention to the news at the time, you will have known that there was a third 
unnamed bidder for Kansas City Southern. And I believe I'm going to make uh, an assumption. I'm going to use Occam's Razor. And I'm going to say that that third bidder for Kansas City Southern was BNSF. Which, which makes a lot of sense because if BNSF has been trying to expand into Mexico, the easiest way to do that is to buy a pre-existing railroad. And that railroad probably was Kansas City Southern. It probably was KCS. Now, why didn't BNSF easily has a lot more money than Canadian National or Canadian Pacific to spend on Kansas City Southern. So why weren't they the winners in this battle? Why wasn't, why didn't we hear news of BNSF KCS merger? Well, Warren Buffett, who uh, on the thumbnail is in the sombrero, he owns Berkshire Hathaway, who owns BNSF. And a couple months ago, he also came out and said that he thought that the two Canadian railroads were vastly overpaying for Kansas City Southern. And that is true probably in my opinion true i do not think kansas city southern is worth 30 billion dollars it's probably more closer worth to 25 or 20 25 billion dollars and warren buffett you know you, you, he is not the man to overpay for 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 things so what probably happened is that the third unnamed bidder was bnsf and you know bnsf dropped out after they realized you know Kansas City Southern to us isn't really worth $30 billion, and that's why they have been trying this, this plan to expand into Mexico in this manner. So, Kansas City Southern to Mexico, the timeline for this is interesting. So, if all should go well, um, well, let me first get into do I think this is likely to happen. It, it is contingent on a lot of things, mostly... If 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 BNSF is able to get these trackage rights between Robstown and Laredo, no doubt they will bid, uh, they will argue for the Mexican government and, and try and get a concession come 2027. Now, do I think they'll get those rights? Honestly, I think they will. I think, you know, Chairman Oberman, Mr. Oberman of the Surface Transportation Board, as you know, he's become very concerned about competition. And I think BNSF could make a incredibly credible, and even CP and KCS2 in their own application, which they have done, they could make an incredibly credible argument that, hey, by expanding BNSF to Laredo, by allowing BNSF to eventually get a Mexican concession, that can help break Union Pacific's near total dominance on cross-border traffic in Mexico. And is the exact kind of rhetoric that Chairman Oberman wants to hear, and it, it will probably sway his decision in favor of BNSF's play here. Now, will we eventually see uh, a concession in Mexico? Well, I think that is also likely because the, Can the Mexican government has become increasingly concerned about competition, and if there is another railroad that is willing to come in, that is willing to serve customers in Mexico, serve all these auto plants and whatnot, and, and these manufacturing centers over trackage rights or even their own lines, I think they'd be willing to listen. So I, and plus, BNSF, sure, I don't think BNSF would be willing to overpay, but they have money to throw around. They have talent. They can they can very easily do this. And I, I, I think it is fairly likely. So come, you know, 2023 when uh, CP and KCS merge, or if they merge, I don't see any reason why they, the Surface Transportation Board would turn it down. You might see BNSF trains in Laredo, Texas, which is the busiest border crossing in North America. And come 2027, 2028, you will probably see BNSF trains south of the border, south of the Rio Grande in Mexico. BNSF to Mexico is probably going to be a thing, in my opinion. Anyways, uh, what do y'all think of, of BNSF to Mexico? Please leave it in the comments. And, uh... Well, thank you all for watching episode two of Short Lines Rail News and Comment, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.